Hi, it's Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics. This is the very last part of the Learn to Quilt series, and this is the bonus project. What we'll be covering in the bonus project is how to make the pinwheels. Now, let me just show you this cute project. It's just so much fun. All of the letters are prefused laser cut cotton, and so all you need to do is simply peel off the paper backing, which I'll show you shortly, iron it down, stitch around, and then you'll be making the pinwheels. Before I jump into the pinwheels, though, like I said, prefused laser cut cotton is wonderful. If you've never used a prefused laser cut product, wow. It saves you the time of tracing and cutting and all of that uh, time. You can, your kit will literally have letters come this way with heat and bond light on the back. Simply peel that back and you're ironing down to your background within seconds. And now, once you have everything stitched down, you have a couple options. You can use either a clear thread and go around all of the shapes. You use the monopoly in the top, the bottom line in the, bo in the bobbin, and we'll have those um, particular colors in the description box below. Or what we did, we love thread, is we put together a masterpiece thread set where the red was stitched down with the red thread and the purple was down with the purple, on and on. So you could also choose the colored thread set if you are interested in buying a high quality thread. And I hope that you will choose thread. As we talked about in the very, very beginning, thread is what holds the whole thing together. So you definitely don't want to script on quality of thread. Um, and we love that the fact that that is 100% cotton thread. I always, I always like that, especially when I'm using 100% cotton fabrics. Uh, jumping right into our pinwheels, well, consequently, the hangers. Oh my goodness. We found these cute hangers. This is the old vintage sewing machine. It actually has a beautiful little bobbin on the top, or a spool of wood. This is wood on the top with gold. It's kind of like a, a metallic thread. And you literally get to feed this through and kind of thread the needle, so to speak, which is just a sweet little touch. This is an add-on. Um, we have this one that's really cute too. It's quilt blocks. That might be a cute little hanger as well. And what I love about these is they're just interchangeable. You, you don't, this is not actually sewn into this thing. You can take this off and use different hangers throughout the year if you want to. And we like seasonal things, of course. All right, let's dive into making pinwheels. I'm gonna show you two approaches to it. The traditional approach is you simply get two pieces of fabric. Let's start with our red pinwheel, for example. Let me just take that off of there. So I can hold that up and you can see that. With the red pinwheel, of course, you get your red fabric and your white fabric, and you're cutting those two squares to two and three eighths. This is the traditional way to make pinwheels. I'm gonna show you a, a tool that I have found called uh, Star Singles, which I really think make my life easier, more fun. I can sew on a line instead of have to make sure I study and make accurate quarter and seam allowances. Let's go with the traditional approach so you can see what I'm talking about. I, actually, we're doing the blue one tonight, looks like today. Two and three eighths, each of those squares, you're going to take that to your Surf, your working surface, and you'll simply draw the line corner to corner. In fact, I'll just show it to you here. We drew the line corner to corner, sewing a quarter inch on either side. And at that point, we take that to our mat. We'll go ahead and cut on the drawn line. Take that to our pressing mat. We'll set that seam. And I like to press to the dark side with pinwheels, unless there's a compelling reason. And sometimes there is, as we learned in this video series, sometimes you do press to the white to have those nice flat seams with your finished block. But in this case, I don't have a compelling reason, so I'm definitely gonna press to the dark side. And you repeat that here. Once you have that put together, you will go ahead, you'll have four of those, and you'll go ahead and assemble that block. Let me show you another approach to getting to this stage. Then we'll put our pinwheel unit together. The other product I mentioned that's out on the market that I really love are the Star Singles. What I love about them 
is the accuracy and it's the kind of the stress-free sewing. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. First off, here's the star singles. You get a lot of these in the package. You can see that, there's a lot of that. And they come in different sizes. So if, you're, if you make a lots of pinwheels or half square triangles, just get these for your sewing room. You're gonna be really glad when you need to be making lots and lots of those. Um, the instructions are right there on the piece of paper. They tell you what to do. And the first instruction tells you to go ahead in this particular case, these make one and a half inch finished uh, half square triangles. So that's my first thing I want to tell you about star singles. You buy the size for the finished measurement. These pinwheels finish at three inches, so this is one and a half, and that's one and a half. Since that's one and a half, you'll go ahead and buy the one and a half inch star singles. You'll go with the finished measurement. On the one and a half inch, they tell you to cut two five inch squares. And I cut mine actually usually a little bit larger than that. Um, that way I can see my fabric poking from behind and I can lay my paper right on top of that. Just as something I've learned using it. Lay that down, pin, and they literally tell you, place paper on top and pin. We've done that. Sew along dotted lines using small stitches. I definitely recommend you shorten your stitch length because you will be tearing that paper away and you don't want to unseat your stitches. So shorten that stitch length up just a bit. Cut along the solid lines, tear away the paper. I, I can do that. I can follow those basic instructions. Now we did go ahead, we sewed all the way around. At that point, I just removed my pins. That's why I really love to have the spinning mat because I just bring, bring that to here. I just keep turning and cutting. Turning and trimming is what I should say. I'm really kind of just trimming that paper away, cutting on my solid lines. I don't have to keep picking up my fabric. I just rotate it. And if you watched any of our YouTube videos, I use the spinning mat really all the time. It keeps uh, things more accurate because I don't have to lift up my fabric. And when you're making some tricky cuts, I'm not tempted to cross over myself or, or worse, cut toward myself. So I really think it enhances the safety of, of sewing when you are doing those types of cuts. So there's, that's all there is, to, and you just simply keep cutting on the lines. Now, one thing I did find uh, was helpful in removing the paper is if I just fold this back like this and kind of make a crease, it just rips away. And then that's just, that's just done. Then once again, just like before, we'll take it to our pressing mat, set the seam, and let's press to the dark side. So whether you get to this stage using the traditional approach or the star singles, it doesn't matter. You're going to arrive at the same location. I do know that using the star singles is more accurate because I'm not guessing where that quarter inch seam allowance is. While I definitely have gotten better at seeking that quarter inch seam allowance over the years, I know I can sew on a, on a line more accurately than I can uh, trying to find that quarter inch seam allowance. Once you're at this stage, now you'll go ahead and put your pinwheel unit together. So let's move some of this out of the way. So the first thing is you'll simply place those two, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. First thing is lay it out. I can't tell you how many times, let me prepare these for you real quick. I can't tell you how many times where I thought I had the layout right and just took it to the sewing machine and sewed it together and find, found I didn't have it laid out properly. And of course, you know what's next is I get out my awesome favorite seam ripper from Clover and I use it and I give it another workout because I didn't take the time to go ahead and lay out my block ahead of time, including a pinwheel, which is easy to get off. Even though it is a simple, a simple unit, it's still easy to get off on that. Now I'm just gonna trim away the dog ears real fast. Oh, see that? See how that would have been easy to be off on that? Now I can confirm, is that right? Because you can see how this could go wrong easily. <laughs> it can go wrong four times. Each one of those is a piece. So once I have that laid out, we go ahead and just right sides together, uh, quarter inch seam allowance, take it to, and then we've done that ahead of time. So I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna mimic what's here. Quarter inch seam allowance, press that seam open. 
Before we press the dark, now we're going to press the seam open. And of course, we would do that again. And now you have two halves. Let me show you how we get to this stage. Once you press those open, notice how you have that little target there on both sides. This is where we love to use the patchwork pins from Clover. They're super sharp. Pinwheels, how do you know if you've made a great pinwheel? All your points come together in the center. If they don't, it's like a blinking beacon. You really need to start again. What we've learned with the Clover pins is if we go right through that little intersection right there, and I go through here at that next intersection, right through that point, and I kind of wiggle, wiggle. I kind of line them up. You kind of just feel them lock in. While that's like that, I will take another pin, and I'm going to come in at an angle, and I'll hold that right in position. And I'm going to leave those in there. I'm going to take this one out, and I'm going to put that in this diagonal, just like that. I'm not sewing over my pins. I'm stopping short of where that quarter inch track is going to be, but I'm leaving those pins in while I sew that quarter inch seam. And your stitch should come right down through that point right there. And then when you open that up, which we've sewn one ahead of time, you'll set that seam, pressing things open. And there's a lot of fabric coming together here. That's why we press open, trying our best to flatten this out if as flat as it can go. Press from the front. And look how, look how beautiful they all come together in the center. Of course, you'll simply make more of your pinwheels, sewing those units together, same on the other side, and sew them to the other side of the quilt center. Bind your quilt, you put the backing on, and you know the rest of the story. So that is all there is to making pinwheels. You can do them the traditional way. You can also use the star singles, which we recommend. Thank you so much for joining me on the Intermediate Quilt Series and also the bonus project. If you haven't already subscribed to the YouTube channel, please do it. And if you've learned something, if you enjoyed our videos, we'd love to get your feedback. See you next time.